We are living in perilous times. Events are happening that are scaring the world, but we have no reason to fear. Today, I will share a verse from Revelation chapter 3 that Jesus promised to keep us from the trial which shall come upon the whole world. Hi, I'm Mike Trotis, Bible teacher and preacher, and you've tuned into my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. We are watching the last day signs happen now. Wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, and earthquakes. These are all the beginning of sorrows. Now, as we see these things happening, just as birth pains get more frequent and more intense before the delivery comes, so too shall we on this earth see famines, pestilence, earthquakes, wars, and rumors of wars happening right before our eyes. Everything is getting ready to happen just the way the Bible prophesied. But there is still no reason to fear. God is with us, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. You and God are a majority. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Psalm 91. The winds may blow. The earth may quake, but the believer is standing on the rock. We are standing on Jesus Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. There is no reason to fear. I feel that there may be some terrible events that are going to happen, maybe very, very soon, but certainly right before the rapture. We are living in the last days. But fear is not of God. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and a sound mind. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us. We have something that the world does not have. We have Jesus Christ standing right beside us. When things get hard, when things get too difficult, he's there with us. He will never leave us or forsake us. When Jesus, when will Jesus return? That's the question that everybody is asking. When will Jesus return? The answer is soon. We are living in the last days. Look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 36 through 42. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour the Lord is coming. Jesus was using the parable or the story of Noah as an example of what the days would be like right before his return. The world was going to be judged. Noah was a man of righteousness. God provided a way for the righteous to escape. Noah and his family were the only righteous people left on the earth. After ten generations from Adam, the entire world became corrupted, satanically corrupted. And God had to wipe out the entire world and start over with Noah. Noah was a righteous man. God provided a way of escape for him. The rapture is the way of escape for the righteous believers who are living right now in this wicked world. Before the trumpet judgments, before the bold judgments, we go up. We are changed. The Bible says we are changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. The rapture is real. 
and it's something that we should be looking forward to. The rapture is not a fairy tale. The rapture is not something made up by somebody 200 years ago. The early church fathers taught about the rapture, the harpazo, the catching away of the church. Paul himself mentioned this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. I will just start at verse 15. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Paul was writing this letter to the Thessalonians. They were concerned that their family members who had died in faith were going to miss out on Christ's return. Paul is assuring them that all of the believers who died before the rapture, they actually go first. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. This expression, the dead in Christ. Now, we know that when a believer dies, his spirit immediately goes to be with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But his body is left here on the earth. At the rapture, the saints of God who are in heaven right now, with the Lord Jesus Christ, they return with him to the earth, to the atmosphere, in the clouds above the earth. They don't touch down on the earth. They come back to the earth, and they're in the clouds in the atmosphere above the earth. There's a shout. There's a voice of an archangel. The trumpet of God sounds, and the dead in Christ, those bodies that have been left here in some state of decay, maybe totally decayed back to dust, those bodies are reconformed and reformatted into a resurrected body, an incorruptible body, a body that will rule and reign with Jesus Christ. Those bodies then will come out of the graves, come out of the tombs. All over the world, tombs will be exploding and bodies will be raising up out of these tombs, out of these graves, out of these uh, places where people have long ago died on battlefields or sunk in ships. Long ago, these bodies will be resurrected. These bodies then will go up to meet the spirit. The spirit, you see, we are a spirit. We live in a body and we have a soul. They will meet the spirit, their spirit, their body and spirit then will be reconnected. Then we who are alive, Paul says, and remain until the coming of the Lord, shall be caught up. There's your word for rapture, harpazo, caught up, to be seized, to be snatched away, to be taken by force. We'll be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and we shall always be with the Lord thereafter. We will always be with the Lord thereafter. That's the rapture. It's the great escape. The rapture is reserved for those people to be evacuated from the earth before the judgment of God comes upon this earth in the tribulation period. Finally, let's look at Revelation chapter 3, the verse I mentioned at the very beginning of this video. Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. Paul, excuse me, John is writing the message of Jesus Christ. These are the words of Jesus. He's speaking to the faithful church. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, he's speaking to the faithful church. And down in verse 10, he says these great words. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Jesus is telling the faithful church, because you have persevered, because you have remained faithful, in the last days there will be a group of believers, the true church, the true church, not just random people who say that because they live in a certain country, they're a Christian. The true followers of Jesus Christ, who made Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior, who are born again. 
because they have persevered and remained faithful in the last days. In these last days, there will be a temptation to abandon God. Paul says in 2 Thessalonians, it's the great apostasy, the great falling away. There will be a temptation as, as we draw closer to the end of the age, as the Antichrist comes on the scene, or even the spirit of Antichrist that's right now working in the world. There is a temptation for believers to walk away, to abandon God, to take the easy way, to decide to stop following the Lord. There are scoffers and mockers right now who are making fun of people who believe in, in, a, in a rapture, who are, who are believing that the Lord Jesus Christ will return for them. They mock and they scoff. They say there is no rapture. They say it's all made up and that God won't help you, that you will have to fend for yourself and make it to the very end and you'll be martyred for Christ. You will die for Christ. He's not coming back for you. He settles it all up at the end, that you will die for Christ at the hands of the Antichrist. That's what these mockers and scoffers says, because they reject the rapture. There will be martyrs right up to the very end. I assume that. But the body of Christ, those who are faithful, those who have persevered, God said right here, Jesus said right here, that he will keep us from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. There is a time of testing coming that the whole earth will make up their mind whether to follow God or to reject God. But for the church, the believers who have already made that decision, now is the time to make your decision to follow God. Now is the time to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For those of us who have done that, we will be evacuated from here. We will be uh, saved from that hour of trial. I don't know when the rapture is going to happen, but I know the rapture is real. Jesus Christ has not abandoned us. He will come back for us. I don't know when that will happen, but I do know that God will come back for us. Look at verse 11. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. There is a crown reserved for us, for those of us who are waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to return. Before the trumpet blasts, before the bold judgments, before the terrible trump trumpet judgments, before the battle of Armageddon, there will be an event called the rapture where Jesus Christ comes back for the church and removes us. He snatches us right out from underneath the devil's nose, right out of his hands. He pulls us out of his clutches. We are removed from this earth. When we go up, judgment comes down. Then when it's all over, we come back to be with the Lord, to rule and reign with him. I, I always question those people who say, there is no rapture. Every, God does everything at the end. He fixes everything at the end. They're not discerning the word correctly. One day I'll teach about that exact example at the end of the age. But we come back with the Lord. You can't come back with the Lord. And there we are in Revelation 19 coming back with the Lord. You can't come back with the Lord until you exit this first. The rapture is the great escape. The rapture is the great exit. The rapture is the great evacuation. It's the blessed hope. And that's why we have no reason to fear. Hey, thank you for watching these videos. Thank you for those of you who have subscribed. And for those of you who are becoming members, thank you. There is membership opportunity that you can learn about in, in the comment section below. If you have a prayer request, please leave that as well in the comment section below. I would like to pray with you and for you. If you're interested in getting one of my books, Waiting for the Rapture, you can look at that at Amazon. Or if you become a member, you can actually get a free book waiting for the rapture by becoming a member with this YouTube channel as we do the thing that the Lord told me to do, preach and teach about the rapture. Tell people that I'm coming back soon.
tell them that the rapture is real. And so if you would like to help me do that, that's great. Keep watching, keep, keep liking, and keep sharing. And until next time, keep looking up because Jesus Christ is coming back soon. God bless you. See you next time.